This is Miami Beach, and it's quite a town. It's the richest 10-mile stretch of sand in the world. We have the simple things of nature. Sun and sea and sand and tropical breezes. And anybody can go native in half an hour. The Chamber of Commerce modestly claims that each grain of sand is worth its weight in gold. I don't know about that, but I can tell you that for luxury, fun, or excitement, there's no place in the world like it. I'm a special investigator for the Hotel Association. My name is Jeff Thompson. Most people think I'm a playboy. And that's the way it's supposed to be, because I work without credentials in Miami Undercover. Rocky around? Boss here? Just left. I had an appointment with him. Said he'd be right back. From where? Priscilla Dean. School for girls. here sooner, but I got sidetracked watching you girls prancing around in their nightgowns. In their nightgowns? They're studying ancient Greek dancing. Teaches them graceful movement. That's very important socially. Yeah, I guess you'll never know an old Greek and want to drop in and dance, huh? Sit down, Rocky. I've got a terrible problem. There was a burglary on campus last night. Harry Gray's mink coat and Joan Gorman's jewelry, worth more than $6,000. Michael Mallard's your man. Did you call him? Well, who's he? Why, only the best cop from Miami Beach. No, Rocky, I don't want the police. That's why I called you. You mean I could do something the cops can't? You can find me a good private investigator. My pal, Jeff Thompson, he's the best. But I say it again, what work could he do the cops can't? He can solve the problem and he can keep it out of the newspapers. It would be awful if the girls' families found out about this. You think it was an inside caper? Uh, the heist? Uh, the robbery? It's the third burglary of a dormitory room in two weeks, and somebody's using a pass key. I hate to think that one of our girls is a kleptomaniac. A what -a yak A compulsive thief, someone who has to steal. Hey, I know some guys like that. If they don't steal, they don't eat. So they gotta steal. Look, I'll go over and see Jeff and tell him to come over here and talk to you, okay? Thanks a lot, Rocky. Okay. How'd you find me? My cleaning man told you I was here? Yeah. Well, Rock, I gotta hand it to you. When it comes to dolls, you go right to the factory. I'm here strictly on business. What kind of business? Look, when you get serious, I got something important to tell you. Very important. More important than this? Marge Whitmore. The girl who runs the school here, she's got big trouble. Miss Whitmore, how do you happen to know her? I fought her mother in Cleveland. I got a draw. All I'll let her listen. You got to help. Three heists in the last two weeks. Over six grand of personal loot gone right out of the window. Miami Beach Police Department works every day. Well, I, I told Marge you can handle it without anything like that, you know. You wouldn't get mad if I asked why. But listen, the school can't afford this kind to get out. You could wrap it up without anything like that happening. Well, I appreciate your thinking of me, but... Uh... Uh, think about it. These pretty chicks here learning to be blue bloods. 
makes a big reason for the rich parents to come down to Miami Beach and spend plenty of jack. You follow? Like a bird dog. And the rest of it is, the Hotel Association would be most willing for me to help the Priscilla Dean School for Girls with their burglary problem. Hey, ain't it funny how we both think alike? Hilarious. Miss Gray, you say you had $300 in cash in your purse? That's right. I only had 175 Poor kid. And none of the money was taken. All right, thank you very much. But what about my brand new mink coat? And my bracelet and watch and necklace? We'll do everything we can to get them back for you. Do you have any ideas? A couple. Well, I'll do my best to cooperate with you. Fine. I'd like a list of the students, and their backgrounds, and a copy of your payroll. You know, a list of the faculty. But surely you don't suspect our teachers. They have access to every place in the college. Well, that's right. I never thought of that. Hi, darling. Hi. Friends of yours? Yeah, once under 21 drink ginger ale. But they bring in guys to my place that don't drink ginger ale. You get what I mean? Yeah, I get it. So these dolls are learning to dance with old Greeks. What do you mean? They do it in their nightgowns with no shoes on. Marge says that's the way old Greeks dance. Rocky, may I see you for a moment? Yes. Yeah. Excuse me, please. $200. Yeah. Thanks, Professor. It makes us even, right? Right. Sorry I let the tab run so long, but you know how things are. All right, better late than ever. Quite. Yeah. For a whole year, he can't pay his tab. All of a sudden, he gives me two bills. I bet he's got about two Gs in his pocket. Who is he? Uh, some kind of professor. Who knows? His name is Peter Bingham. He should be on his faculty list. Yeah, here we are. Peter Bingham, associate professor, English 3B, Browning and Tennyson. Salary 6000 a year. Why'd you let him run up such a big tab? He brings his friends into my place and they spend a lot of cash. Pals uh, are loaded, huh? Yeah. His girl is Marion Colton. Her old man is loaded, but fooey, what a dame. Unattractive, huh? Oh, she's a dish. Well, what she does to this guy? He snaps up fingers and he begs for dog food. No wonder he can't pay his tab. He spends all his dough keeping up the crowd and on a doll. Suddenly he pays his full tab in cash. Well, I'm gonna look in on a few classes, Bingham's, maybe a couple others. You wanna come along? Nah, that kind of stuff gives me a headache. I think I'll go down to the gym and go a couple of rounds with the teacher. The teacher's a woman. So who'd you expect? Tony Zale? I'll see you later. <laughs> That's all Greeks. It's easier. Do you think you could do it any better? Yeah, betcha. Watch this. Hey, where'd you learn to do that? At Stubbins? Well, I don't know any school called that. What kind of school? It's a gym in New York. But I tell you, the full I have to learn is dancing and exercising. I'll come to this joint. <laughs> well, you can. It's a girl's school. Don't knock it, honey. Here, let me show you how to do this. I learned nothing in Peter Bingham's class except that he thrilled the girls with his readings of Robert Browning. Now, After I left his class, I dropped in on a senior class in psychology conducted by the noted Dr. Arthur Loring. Uh, Mr. Thompson, uh, we do not often have visitors in our classroom, so for your benefit I will review a bit and hope that you may follow with some uh, intelligence. We have been discussing 
the theories of psychology of the Superman, the uh, Nietzsche theory that is so successfully exploited by Adolf Hitler. I see. I doubt that you do, but no matter. Uh, we have brought these theories up to date to my own luring theory, that is, that 90% of all people are inferior. I don't agree. Mr. Thompson, please, you are here to observe. Please do not interrupt. Uh, to continue, ladies, the stupid people, the 90%, that is, are afraid. They don't know what they're afraid of, uh, but, but uh, they're so fear-ridden, they cannot protect themselves against the superior people. On the other hand, the superior person has no fears. He knows full well that whatever he wants or needs is his for the taking. Uh, uh, from the inferior person, that is. Uh, to illustrate my point even further, there is not one of you in this classroom that would not be distressed were you to lose some prized possession. This bracelet, for example, you must be superior to the person who has designs on your belongings. I could have argued the Superman theory with Dr. Loring, but I was supposed to be trying to catch a thief. And my best suspect was a professor named Peter Bingham, who had $2,000 in his pocket and a girlfriend with expensive tastes. I wanted to get to know them better, so I had Marjorie Whitmore arrange a dinner party for them, with Joan Gorman and Terry Gray as guests, too. It was a nice arrangement, because uh, well, Marjorie Whitmore was uh, well, it was a nice arrangement. Joni, I'll wait for you in the car. Hurry up. Okay. You got a date, all right, with the police. Is he the burglar, do you think? Uh, he'll doodle another one comes along. Oh, please let me go. I was a little late getting to the dinner party because first I had to turn the purse snatcher his name was Carl Morgan, over to Lieutenant O'Malley of the Miami Beach Police Department. Hi. Sorry, I'm late. Hey, we were worried about you. We were just admiring Miss Colton's bracelet. Peter gave it to me today. He says it's just a friendship gift. Well, it's the sort of gift that usually precedes an important announcement. I must have cost you six months' salary. Almost. But I can afford it now. I have a new additional source of income for my family up north. It was quite a trinket. Peter would never give me a mere trinket. Would you, darling? Of course not. No, it's a bad choice of words. You ever see anything like that, Joan? No. But now that I've lost my bracelet, I'm very jealous. Uh, excuse me. A new dish I'm serving, Mike. Pizza a la Rocky. Oh, it's real great, Rock. Real great. Hi, boys. I didn't see you come in. He used the back way. Oh, that kid you brought in. I had him in a hot seat. Couldn't sweat a thing out of him. The lieutenant didn't have time to eat supper, so I fixed him up. Now, what about the boy? Morgan? Only claims that purse he tried to snatch was the first job he ever pulled. You go along with that? I'm inclined to. Right now, I'm wondering why you're killing time at that fancy dinner party. He even arranged to... Well, I'd better level with you, Lieutenant. I'm doing this my way. Well, your way better be my way. Lieutenant, you know, I've, uh, I've always thought of you as a very discreet police officer. 
Go on, keep it rolling. A man with a keen appreciation of the value of the tourist trade to this town. Who wouldn't tip the newspaper men as to the presence of a burglar within the sacred precincts of the Priscilla Dean School for Girls. You won't, will you, Mike? I should have my head examined. You know that, don't you? Well, no more favors? Better get me while I'm in the mood. I need help. Checking pawnbrokers might have received some of the stolen jewelry. This I don't mind. But we'll need photos of the missing pieces. Everything was insured. The adjuster owes me a couple of favors. Well, get the photos and meet me tomorrow morning. Using the pictures I got from my insurance adjuster friend, Mike and I visited 10 pawn shops without any luck. Garfield's place was the 11th, and we had little hope of finding anything. Just a routine check, Mr. Garfield. They're always routine. Do you want me to say I recognize this stuff? Only if you do. Yeah, I've got all these four pieces. They're the McCoy, real good. Can we see them? Oh, sure, Lieutenant, certainly. Right over here. Who pawned them? Uh, Joseph Remington, he's been in here three times. He came in here yesterday and he brought me this. Altogether, I gave him $4,000 for the stuff. You got a bargain. If you don't redeem them. This is the piece that was stolen from Joan Gorman. Stolen? Lieutenant, you didn't give me no report on any stolen goods. Now, don't get excited, Mr. Garfield. No one's accusing you of anything. Do you remember what Mr. Remington looks like? Well, I gave him $4,000. I hardly remember. Does look familiar? No, nothing like that. The man I did business with was pushing 50 or 55. Well, maybe Bingham had a confederate. What address did this uh, Remington give you? Well, I have it right here, Lieutenant. There you are, right over here. Lincoln Road. It's a phony. One of the best dress shops in Miami Beach. I'll check it out, but we'll get nothing. Can you describe the man? Well, he was short and... Sort of muscular like me, and spoke like a smart man. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Garfield. I'm going to have to impound these. Four thousand oh. dollars? Thanks for your help. Uh, you can drop me at the dress shop, and I'll go through the motions of checking out the name Remington. Oh, by the way, I released that Morgan kid this morning on nominal bail, as you suggested. Good. You uh, still want to go it alone? Well, I promised Miss Whitmore I would. I'll get rock if I need help. Well, yell if you need me. Thanks. We'll return the jewelry to the girls, but not yet. They might talk and tip off the man we want. But it's impossible. What is? The description the pawnbroker gave you. If it's half the male members of our faculty. And they're all from Harvard, Yale, or Princeton. That explains their accent. Are you sure it wasn't the boy who tried to steal Terry's purse? Oh, Lieutenant O'Malley checked him out. He's much too young. Doesn't fit the description at all. You saw him. I know, but witnesses can sometimes be wrong. I, uh, I think I know who it might be. We'll just have to wait and see. Jeff, I always hope you out for the of my pal, right? Right. So why don't you be a pal for me, too? Why, I'm your best friend. Some friend. Three nights running, you got me waiting for a guy that ain't gonna show up. It's cold, you know that? Yeah, he'll show up. Tonight, I hope. I told you to wear a sweater. I hate sweaters. And besides, I got a thought from the wicket of my saloon what's got glue on his fingers. You wanna leave? I'm no rat. But the whole setup is silly. If this guy shows up, I'm supposed to hide in the bedroom. What's silly about it? Me in a girl's bedroom. I told you once before, Miss Whitmore has gotten another room for the girls temporarily. Joan and Terry won't be in their bedroom. That's what I'm complaining about. It's silly.
Let me go, you fools. That's all a mistake. It's a mistake, all right, doctor, and you made it. It's an experiment with regard to my psychology lectures. You tell that to the police. They love experiments. They might even try one with you. They want to see how you like prison. Please, I'll pay you to let me go. I'm a wealthy man. Whatever you want. Whatever I want? Okay. I want you to meet Lieutenant O'Malley. Come on. Well, Lieutenant O'Malley checked out Peter Bingham. He really inherited that money from his family. I know. Peter's going to take a year's leave of absence. He's going to write a book on Tennyson. Ain't there enough books already? <laughs> you know, I can understand Dr. Loring trying to prove this Superman theory, but why did he pound the jewelry? He doesn't need the money. He's as rich as Creason. Well, it's too dangerous to have the jewelry in his possession. He thought it would be safer to convert it into cash. How did you know he was going to burglarize Terry and Jones' room? And Terry was wearing that necklace in his class. I thought he might make a try for it. I think I need some exercise. I'll see you later. <laughs> Here, let me show you how to do this. Gee, where'd you learn to do that, Stillman? My mother taught me this, sir. Uh... <laughs> 